What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out a game called As Far As The Eye. This is a game about a nomadic tribe that lives on the back of a giant water buffalo. Kind of a curious game, in all honesty, because it's sort of like FTL had a baby with like Civ 6 or something. Like, it's a really, really weird game, and it's not even like, it doesn't actually... It doesn't actually copy Civilization VI that much either, but it is a hex-based system, so really the general idea is that because you're nomadic, you're going to be building small societies on areas of the map in the hopes that you'll be able to get enough resources to get to the next part of the map. Why are you trying to get there? Because the world is ending inside the world of this game. They're going to use all kinds of esoteric terminology and all kinds of just kind of strange speech because they call things like different stuff than what we call them. But anyways... Because of that, every 400, well not because of that, but every four or 500 years, the world goes through a cycle, it ends, it floods, kind of like Bible style, and all of these people go to a place called the Eye, which is like the only refuge from the apocalypse. During that time, all the tribes, they share all of their technology and all the things they've learned over the last couple centuries. Once the world begins to unflood, they head back out, and then the whole cycle repeats. And so that's the general idea anyways. Let's start a new game off. Now, we can choose what tribe we want to play as. You do have a lot of options here, uh, and so you might be thinking to yourself, like, why would I want less people in my tribe? Why would I want more people in my tribe? So on and so forth. Uh, so, really, you've got the West tribe. They are the default start for RimWorld. These guys would effectively be, like, the default. You get three characters. Every character has a positive trait and a negative trait, and then you start out with 600 or 1,600 rations. That's it. Every single day, these little guys eat six apiece, so you'll be losing 18 a day. This should roughly give you around, like, 80 turns or so to mess around with. Uh, the South Tribe. The South Tribe, you start with four people, so they're going to consume a lot more food. They also start with less food, but they start with a camp. Uh, so they have, like, a mobile camp that they can bring with them. Every single one of their guys will start with a positive and a negative trait. And then, of course, uh, one of your pupil, all your pupils will start with a random level three trade. That could actually be a made. That could actually like almost win the game for you, depending on what randomized world that you get. Uh, but you'll see why once I get a little bit further on into the game. So the South Tribe, pretty strong start because you start out with a lot of manpower to get stuff done, and you start out with every single one of them at a level three trade, which is actually fairly high level. Like it takes a, it'll take you a good 30, 40 minute play to get somebody up to level three usually. All right. We've got the East Tribe. They start out with two people, a lot less food, but they start out with 200 wood. Apparently, they get Theoretician Invading. Okay. Apparently, maybe they're at war or something like that. I'm not really sure what that means. They got two random positive and one random negative. So these guys start out with a lot more positive traits and the same amount of negative traits. And then right here, the Vagaries. The Vagaries are effectively disasters that'll happen. So their disasters are more intense than everybody else's disasters. And then there's the North Tribe. They have three pupils, 1,200 food, 600 wool. Uh, all three of them are puny, unfortunately, but they start with six random positive traits. So, I don't know exactly what puny does. I, I would definitely recommend that they add a little tooltip when you mouse over these that just pops up and, like, tells you what these all mean. Effectively, like, some of them are sort of self-explanatory if you've played through the tutorial. But just UI design-wise, I, I would always recommend having little pop-ups... Uh, for, you know, the things that use various terminology the player not might not be introduced to yet. So anyways, uh, we'll go with the West Tribe. I don't think I've unlocked these guys yet, so I think we can only do the West Tribe. We'll start off with them. And this is the game world right here, in case you were wondering about that. So, the game world. How this works is that you've got an FTL-style pathing system in between these various biomes. Your goal is ultimately to get to the eye, but for right now, we're starting out in this big balanced area right here. It's going to call these chunks of land halts, because uh, they're effectively like rest stops. These are the areas where you're stopping off in order to help your tribe out get all the things they need to make the journey to the next area. The game is really kind of an economic game in all honesty, like it's a game about economic planning. So we've got a marsh halt right there. We need 225 wood and 150 knowledge to get there. There's a big canyon halt right here. We need 375 wood in order to get there. We also have what looks like another one down here, 375 meat and 75 ore in order to go through there. I would say, Let's get after this one right here. There's no way to tell what the pa the price is going to be to go from here to here or from like here to here. So you can't really plan in advance. 
but you can try. Uh, let's go ahead and check out our little area where we live. The game does not have like... So the, the game doesn't have WAS controls. Just a fair heads up. In addition, as far as I know, if we go to the settings here, you can take a look at the various graphic settings that are going to be available for the game. It's got all the standards, you know, your anti-aliasing and your HDR and whatnot. Audio settings got to split into a lot of channels just in case you're the kind of person who likes to kill the music and play something else in the background. Uh, there's your interface options right there that you can play around with. Uh, there's all the languages that are going to be available. Uh, just in case you prefer to, you know, play in your home language. And then we've got inputs, which is coming soon. You can't really change the keybinds around. And so that's one of those things that I really hope they get smoothed over by the time the game comes out. Uh, because of the lack of keyboard controls, I'm going to be, like, dragging and basically using, like, mobile controls almost to get things done. But we can rotate with the middle mouse click. We can kind of slide around with the right mouse click. Nothing too crazy. Uh, we've got ore over on that side. We've got stone on that side. We've got pemkins in both of these areas. Pemkins are basically a fill-in uh, for rations, just in case you wanted to get those. Looks like we got some wool down there. Ultimately, though, our goal is to gather wood, and we're going to need a lot of it. So my suggestion would be that we take this guy over to here, and then we settle right here for right now. That's going to get all three of our little civilians ready to rock. I'm going to tell this little guy to go get wood over there. Actually, what is their traits? So this guy right here has resurrection. When he dies, another will come to the tribe with no trade and new random traits. He's an acrophobe, which means he can't cross mountains. With Julno, it looks like she is a Nedian. When she's not doing anything, she doesn't eat food. And then apparently she cannot produce food, so she doesn't like cooking. Uh, this one is also an Nedian, and then this person is a glutton, so they eat double food. So this person's going to eat, I think they eat eight a day, don't they? Six per turn per pupil. Okay, so she's going to have nine instead of six. He's going down there to gather wood. I would definitely recommend you go over there to gather wood as well. I don't think we can gather from right there right now. Instead, what I would have you do is go gather some pumpkins. Uh, I'd like to see if we can get... You know, a little bit more food. What you'll see is they'll change outfits, and then they're going to go out and do the jobs when I end the turn over here. This large meter at the bottom is pretty much all you have to worry about in the game. So this is when the deluge is going to arrive on your caravan once this fills up. Uh, this is not persistent. It, re it goes back down every time you get to a new biome. So take your time, but don't take too much time. And so it's kind of a weird thing in this game. The more you exploit the environment and the more damage you cause to nature, the more hostile the game is going to get towards you. And so it's really something to consider that, like, yeah, you do kind of want to move fast, but at the same time, you've got to strike, like, that fine line in between gathering all the stuff you need in order to survive and also not going too far. Um, I would like to see that gamify it in some way. Like, I don't know, make the meter or something, like, start to darken and turn, like, red or something like that. The more hostile the land is coming towards you. Sometimes what I run into is, is that, like, by the time I realize the land is hostile, it's already too late and you're kind of in a death spiral, I guess. I put about two or three hours into this game uh, since I got access to it yesterday. Oh, you're done right there. Okay. We'll go get that wood. Oh, oh you're already doing it. Nice. Okay. Take some initiative then. Hey, this person leveled up. Are you a level 2 gatherer now? Let's take a look. Every single character has this massive skill wheel right here. And as you can see, there's the gatherers. So they were filling up right there. Uh, basically, she's a gatherer 1 now. Uh, gatherer 2, I think, happens once you get to the end of this track right here. And then, other than that, I'm not really super sure how to read the whole thing. But anyways, it's a bunch of different skills. Everything from hunting to baking to cooking to farming to herding. I mean, there, there's loads and loads of jobs around. It does seem like there's one missing from the druid tree right here that's not mirrored. I, I don't know if it hasn't been implemented yet, but it was one thing that I noticed. The other thing we can do is if we look at our caravan right here, we can also take a look and open up a knowledge tree. There's going to be a limited per-run knowledge tree right here that you can unlock. Things like backpacks and stuff of that nature that will make your characters more effective at sort of doing their jobs. Going down there to get wood, huh? It's going to take a little bit longer to get that done, but... I think I can live with it. I'll just keep gathering pumpkins anyways because we're going to need them, so why stress about it? Uh, the pumpkins are giving us a little bit of extra leeway. I mean, we're already down like 300 food right now. We have enough to like get things done. My suggestion would be that we go and we build like over... Let's say that we build a hunting lodge. Actually... We might be able to build a camp or something. So there's two types of buildings in this game that you kind of want to think about. Uh, when you go to build stuff, 
there's going to be the basic version of everything, and there's going to be the perma version of everything. Effectively, the perma version is suspended in the air with balloons, and when you arrive, you can just deploy it places. And I do think that, like, farming on your first map and getting enough stuff put together in order to do that is actually a fairly major part of the strategy, so maybe we should do that instead. That's a plane right there, so what I could do is I could put a quarry in on this side, we could gather some, we could gather some stone. Just to throw in the back, so that possibly we might be able to build something more awesome further on down the line. Uh, something like a cookhouse is very, very useful. If you can get the bits and pieces put together, a bakery can be pretty useful as well. It's a little bit cheaper, but it uses grain instead of using meat, so... It comes down to what you want to do here, but if we could get some wool put together and some stone, I don't think that that would be that bad of an idea. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to put down a... So I need wool. I'm going to put a pasture down here. There's 400 wool right there. Yeah, let's go get the wool first. There's a hill right there. I can demolish the building, and then we can get the stone from right there, too. So I think, like, this is the optimal location right here for us to do this. Where is the pasture at? There's the pasture. It's going to take us 100 wood to get that done, but I think it's a good idea. I think we should do it. I do want to pay attention to my wood gathering. All right, you go gather up some wool while you can. Oh, no, you've killed off your forest. All right, we'll go explore until you find another one. And we'll go... I'm going to check this corner out over here, just kind of see what's around. There's a few more llamas and stuff over there, but I don't think we need a llama right now. I'm a little bit worried about the wood supply on this map. Like, not hugely worried about it, but like a little worried about it. And we've got an ancient sacred site right there. We can go ahead and pray. I think we should do that. Let's go ahead and pray and see what's up. So we can pray and we can get 50 herbs if we want. Might be kind of cool. If I offer 200 wool, I get something. Or I can plunder and I can get 200 wool. But something bad will happen. I'll just pray and take the, the 50 herbs. You never know when you're going to need them. You go over to here. Yeah, we'll kind of just look around. we got plenty of time to play with this map. So I'm not that worried about the deluge or any curses or anything coming around. Uh, I think we have enough wood to get moving. So I think we should be okay. Uh, how much wool did I need for these constructions over here? So let's say that I wanted to make a perma sawmill. I'm going to need to have what looks like some ore. Okay. For a perma quarry, I'm going to need a little bit more, but I'm going to need some ore as well. It's kind of a bummer. I mean, we're going to start accumulating these buildings like one by one anyways. All right. I'm going to need ore for all this, regardless of what I do. Okay. Well, I'll keep an eye on it. We'll decide what we want to do. Is he on his way back down? As I said, he should definitely be on his way back down. I don't know if anybody's hit gatherer level 2 yet, either. That's the other part. Was there another exploration? Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah, go over here and explore that. Alright, so it is cold and humid in the ruins. Typhoon progresses slowly through the deeper and deeper puddles and pools, but something is stuck to their leg, a leech. Typhoon gets rid of it quickly and flees the remains, but feels a fever arriving and is weak. So apparently the next damage that person takes is going to be doubled. Alright, so... Typhoon quickly comes across a dimly flashing orb. Typhoon knows this type of orb well. They were once an energy source of more sedentary times. Typhoon places a hand on it and concentrates. The orb reactivates and admits... Okay, so don't you just love it when you're walking through ancient ruins and you find a ball? Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to gather... I'm going to see if I can gather up some more food. We're getting kind of low right now. I'd like to take care of myself a little bit. We've got 120 wool right there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bulldoze this. How much wood do we have left in that jungle right there? Only 11? Oof. Tough one. But what I'd like to do is we'll get a sawmill down here. Or not a sawmill. We'll get a quarry down here. Sounds okay. I mean, we could get a running farm, too. That wouldn't be the worst idea. There's also fisheries and things to be spoken of. I wonder if they can just fish wherever. Be an interesting idea if they could. I keep wanting to play with wasps. I need to take my hand off the keyboard and just play with my right hand. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. 
Which people has nothing to do? You have nothing to do? Alright, go gather food for a little bit. I want to have like a big ass food supply. And honestly, we need people to get good at gathering anyways. We'll go over here and everybody just grab all the food you can before we hit the road. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, we're just waiting for somebody to hit gather level 2 right now. That's pretty much it. Once they hit gather level 2, we should be in a, a sweeter position to get things finished off. You go explore up this way. It's possible that there might be a rhinophilo up there. There's a rhinophilo around. We're going to want to capture him because it's going to make us a lot stronger and we'll be able to build some special buildings uh, using. So you can make rhinophilo buildings. So you know how this, like, this guy right here has a bunch of buildings on his back? You can get another one of these guys and you can build more buildings on his back so that you can get even more mobile. Really, the entire game is just sort of you planning around. And there's one right there. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, he's going to have to go back to town in order to capture this thing. But I do want to capture it before too long. Oh, nice. We hit gatherer too. Well, I'm going to wait until we start getting curses and stuff for being here. I'm not really too worried about the curses. Like, once the curses start happening, then we will get off this map. But up until the curses start getting nasty, I don't really care. Uh, bring back that rhinophilo. Thank you for that. We've got two people gathering food right now and getting better at it, so that's really, really good. If I put them inside of a gathering hut, they'll get even better at crafting, but at this point they've gained as much XP as they possibly can just from gathering off the ground. I am curious about what kind of fish is that? A fine fish. Okay. That's already been explored. That's already been explored. We brought back the rhinophilo. Let's... I've got 525. Let's build... I think, I think I am going to go for the quarry while we've got a little bit of time. That's fine. We can destroy all the resources on that hex. I just wanted to get a little stone piled up while we wait. Like, we're gathering up food for the road right now, which I think is a really good idea. You come over here and gather whatever stone you can. Come be a miner for me, would you? I think we're still net positive on food, which is great, but we can only carry so much food, which is really like the big terror of this whole ordeal. I feel like we're doing pretty good right now. We bring back a little bit more stone. So we got 120 stone right there. Now we've got enough stone and we've got enough wool to where we can make our first mobile building, I think. And so I think that's a really, really good thing to do. You guys are still gathering over here. Honestly, if they're going to still be gathering, we're kind of out of wood, though. Never mind. I was going to build some stuff, but like I think it'll take us below where we want to be in order to travel. And so we may try to get wood out of the next map instead. Like I don't even know if we're going to be able to pack all this stuff with us is the big part that I'm personally kind of worried about. The other thing that I would consider is maybe grabbing some ore while I'm here, but then I'm going to have to build another one of these things. So, Oh, we can also upgrade it too. Yeah, if I had some knowledge, but I don't. Oh, I do have knowledge, actually. I got a little bit. I have enough knowledge to do anything with? It's going to take 200 for our first upgrade right there, or 250 for that one. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, that's good. That's something to think about. This game is a game of planning at the end of the day. It really sincerely is. It's a game about kind of gambling, and it's a game about planning. Like, you're trying to make the best out of the situation, effectively. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to carry all this stuff off the map with me. So maybe go gather a little bit more wood. The good news is there's this perk that sometimes your little guys get. It's called Elitist, and it means that they won't gather from anything that, like, doesn't have a camp attached to it. Oof, at least none of our guys have that. That's like a game over perk right there. Like, it, like, ends the game for you. It's pretty bad. Uh, we could do... I've got 470 wood. We're going to lose 375 of it, so we should have... About 95 left by the time we get out of here. I don't know if I want to move on to the next map just yet. Like, so I'm a little bit conflicted. Part of me wants to put a gathering camp in, like, right here. And just have them gather all these pemkins and keep leveling up their gathering. But I don't know if it's a great idea. How much does a gathering hut cost? 70. So pretty much all of our extra wood. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, we actually don't have any place that we can put the camp down there. So I think the better spot for it would be right here. If that's what we were going to do. Let's see if we can level up their gathering a little better. There we go. Alright, so you're all good to go right there. 
And I'm pretty sure only one person at a time can work at a gathering camp. Oh, there's going to be a flood really, really soon. Okay, we're next to a bog. I, I think the flood makes it so anything that's next to a lake takes damage. So yeah, these guys are going to take damage right here. It's not great. It's not super rad. There's a flood in two days. Weak, dude. Okay, well, you gather food where you can. How many of you guys can work here? Just one? All right. Well, do your best. Yeah, our building lost 70 HP. Kind of is what it is. What are you going to do? But the good news is, is this guy is now working on becoming higher level. As you can see, he's jumped to this track right here. And that means he's going to get a lot more resources out of this stuff and a lot more knowledge out of every single turn, too, which makes you a bit more effective. Uh, we do have enough knowledge right now to upgrade something if we want to. We've got seduction we can have for our caravan. That means that if we park our settlement next to any of the rhinophilos, uh, we'll get basically we'll tame the rhinophilo instantly and save a bunch of turns. I do think we're bleeding out on food a little bit. It might be a decent idea to go somewhere else while we still have a little bit of leeway because we're consuming, like, what, 21 food per turn? Yeah, around there, 19 per turn. So that gives us, like, 50, 60 turns to play around with on the next map in order to get set up. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Let's move on to the next map. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Uh, so we can actually take off right now. The downside is we're going to have to pack all this stuff. And, and so it can be kind of hard to fit sometimes. Uh, let's click on this right here and we'll kind of see what we can smoosh in. Uh, I'm I'm very, very remiss to leave food behind. Every time I've lost in this game, it's because I run out of food. Like, I, I almost, like, never die to anything else. Fair warning. Like, food is super mega hyper critical in this game. Oh, that's four across, is it? Okay, I can live with that. We'll throw that on in there. We got that right there. How much is herbs? Herbs are actually pretty easy to transfer around. Okay. Good to know. We've got an extra 115 wood if we can fit it in somewhere. There we go. This is why you want to get extra rhinophilos, by the way. They give you an extra row of storage, and you can build buildings on top of them. So, like, they're actually kind of a really good... Yeah, you kind of want to get every rhinophilo on every map whenever you can. Uh, like, right here. This is, like, rhinophilo explosion. Uh, the downside is... I don't see a lot of food. Okay, well, let's just settle. There's no trees either. Yikes. What do I need to get to the next map? I need ore and I need wood. Okay, so there's got to be wood around somewhere. It's either that or we can go wood and wool. Okay. I don't, like, intensely want to deploy until we find trees. There's some right there. Okay. Not gonna lie, not a great situation. That forest right there is 287, which still doesn't get us to our goal. Actually, it does, but we can't build any buildings, and we're gonna starve before then. Oh no, dude. There's no trees. I think we're screwed. I've already wasted too many turns. There's one right there. Oh, this is brutal. This is really bad. Okay, let's settle it down right here. You guys get to work grabbing pumpkins. It's being exploited already. You go get that rhinophilo, please. Sometimes the clicking can be a little sticky. It's just a thing that I've noticed while I've been playing. Sometimes the sometimes it can be a little sticky figuring out like what you want to select. Everybody go tame. Oh, really? The ground shakes for a few seconds. Permanent buildings seem to be particularly affected. All permanent buildings lose 50 HP. We don't have any permanent buildings, so who cares? I love the way that they take like the rhinophilo and they attach it to a balloon. That's really, really awesome. Yeah. All right. So the pemkins are underneath there. We've got 355 pemkins available. I would suggest that maybe we use a little bit of wood in order to get... Yeah. 
you're a gatherer, right? Guess what? You're not a gatherer anymore. I need you to make a fishery over here. You're going to gather fish from right there and get as many as you possibly can. Oh, they're going out to tame more rhinophilos. Gotcha. Well, I like the I like the I like the dedication, but actually I need you to gather wood for right now. So would you kindly go ahead and get that wood right there? That would that would definitely help me out a little bit. Uh, they're taming one more rhinophilo up there. This person should be able to be a fisherman now for a little bit. We've got a little bit of leeway on food, but we're gonna need to get a cookhouse up pretty soon. Otherwise, bad things are going to happen. So, in order to get a cookhouse up, which will cook the fish, we need 50 ore in order to get that done. And we're also chopping trees over on that side. Okay. Um, this is one thing that, that can be kind of problematic, is that the map prior may not give you all the things that you need in order to get to the next area. Like, it does. Don't get me wrong. There's enough wool here. And there's enough forests here for us to get to the other side. But is there enough forest and is there, you know, enough resources for us to kind of set up here, gather the food and things we need for the next transit? That's the part that's worrying me. Alright, so we got you taken care of. We got 60 wood laying around. I need somebody to make a quarry. Possibly right here would honestly be the best place But if I could have you come down this way and just kind of scout this area I'd appreciate it. Just kind of see what's around. Okay, that's fine Now we are gonna need a, a ton of wool. Luckily, we've already got a head start on the wool, so it's not that big of a deal, but I think For 100 wood, we can get away with that. That's fine. That person can just, like, stay there because they don't consume food when they're not working anyways. There you go. Bring back that wood for me. And then what I'd like to do here is we'll take this character and we will lock down a mine. Oh, we can make a perma mine. That'd be pretty cool. That might be helpful. Yeah, put down a, put down a permanent mine right there that we can carry along with us to the next map, assuming we even get there. There you go. So we've got a mine. Uh, you start mining real fast. But yeah, this is as far as the eye. Uh, the game definitely, it's like, so I, I think there, there's definitely, like, it's got a great art style. It's got good sound design. It's got great universe building. Uh, I do think there's a little bit of polish around the edges to be taken care of. Because, like, I would say every single one of my playthroughs has ended because I run out of food while trying to gather the things in order to get to the next area. It's entirely possible that in the two or three hours that I'm playing the game, I haven't fully grasped kind of the nuance of the title. Oh no. Apparently there was a flood. And so it's got us all flooded. We got 120 fish though. That's pretty rad. Definitely about that life. 160 fish coming in. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. We've got enough ore now, I think, in order to make ourselves a cookhouse possibly. Yeah, dude, make a cookhouse. Go for it. We got mines and things around, so we'll be okay. A perma cookhouse actually probably would have been a really good idea. Apparently, drudgery happened. The work of a gathering and specialization has been decreed particularly annoying. So pupils really do not want to do it and get sick if they are working in this field. Uh, what field are we talking about? Do they just, like, not want to... I'm not understanding what happened right there. So what happened with the, the drudgery? We're starting to get a lot of curses and things, so I'm kind of wondering what happened with, with drudgery. This person's sick. Go ahead and make us some more rations. Yeah, grill some fish off. I don't know if she does that like every single day. But she seems to be doing all right. We can't gather wood for right now, so I wouldn't recommend doing it. Uh, they're going to get sick and bad things are going to happen. So we'll go ahead and wait six turns or whatever. Oh, maybe she just doesn't want to have a job. I don't know. Oh, no, she died, even though she didn't have a job. Okay. That's sort of uh, an issue, but... Like, I feel like maybe I can live with it. Yeah, we went through that pretty fast over there. I don't know if we're going to have enough resources to get out of here. 
We may have to like we have to get exactly that amount right there, and I still have to build I still have to build a I still have to build a pasture for getting all this wool too. There's just not enough trees on this map. That's really unfortunate. That's kinda like the polish thing that I was talking about beforehand. Like there should be at least double the amount that you need in order to get to the next map. So effectively what happened to us here is that like we didn't know this last map had a ton of wood on it. If I had stockpiled a little further, we would have been okay. But there was no way to know that everything going further right was going to cost even more wood in order to get there. And this map right here just flat out does not have... It has like two patches of trees. It has like 500 wood on it. And unfortunately what we had to do is we had to take the fish in order to get the food. So we had to make the fishery. In order to make the fishery work, you got to have the cookhouse, which meant that we needed the mine. And so as you can see, we kind of spiraled out with our resource usage. And this is like effectively the end of the line for our little civilization. Um, so like this is basically what has happened to me nearly every single time I've played the game is that like if you stop off to deal with like food issues you're not going to be able you're not going to have the manpower or enough to get like all of the material issues that you need in order to move on. I also think that like these disasters are a little frequent. Like starting with the second map, they start to come up like every 5 or 6 turns and like they can actually be really really detrimental. Like you just saw that last event basically insta killed one of our characters. As that's what I mean is there's like little polished things that that I would hope kind of with the balance of the game and kind of the flow of the game get worked on, but I do think they have a good foundation for right now. Uh, I do like the setting of the game and I do actually like the building and the moving around. I like the idea that they're going for. Uh, I think it just needs to be, you know, polished a bit. So anyways, I'll see y'all later. Thank you for being here. Take care, everybody. This is As Far As The Eye. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games, so you don't have to. You can leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. In addition, you can check out my Twitch stream, and you can check out my Discord if you wanted to be further in tune with the community. Alright, see you later, everybody.